Math 31, let's really try and unpack example eight. There is a ton to this example. It's kind of the heart of section 3.7. So given this function, one of our toolkits, or at least one of our toolkit functions shifted, shifted down five units, given f of x equaling x squared minus five, find a domain on which f is one to one and non-decreasing, write the domain in interval notation, then find the inverse of f restricted to that domain. All right. So we've got a lot to do, and let's let's just start to unpack this one one piece at a time. So given this function, find a domain on which f is one to one and non-decreasing. So I want to unpack that first sentence. Now I want you in your mind's eye to graph x squared minus five. All right. I'm hoping you're thinking of a parabola, right? And I'm going to draw just the sketchiest parabola in here, something like this, right? Now. All parabolas are going to pass the vertical line test. They're definitely functions, all right? And they have no domain restrictions. There's no fraction, there's no radical, there's no logarithm. They, they pass the vertical line test, but I think you can see they are going to fail the horizontal line test. So parabolas, this parabola as is, is not one-to-one, -one, which is why this, this direction says find a domain on which f is one-to-one -one and non-decreasing. All right, so for the sake of continuing this, I'm actually going to write this function up a little bit more formally. All right, so give me a moment. I'm going to plug in some numbers and get some ordered pairs, or you could turn it right over to your calculator. So here we go. We've got y, we've got x here, so let me do 10 and 10. All right, so I'm going to go down five, one, two, three, four, five. There's my y-intercept. All right, if I plug one in, I'd be at negative four. So that would be symmetric, negative one, negative four. If I plug two in, two squared is four. Four minus five is negative one. So then I would also have negative two, negative one. Let's try three. What, uh, three squared would be nine. Nine minus five would be four. One, two, three, four. Here, so that's a pretty good looking parabola right now. And you can make the sound effects if you want when you draw it. There we go. Okay. So again, fails the horizontal line test. Right now, it is not one-to-one, -one, but it says find a domain on which f is one-to-one -one and non-decreasing. So if I'm non-decreasing, it means I'm increasing or I'm just staying still. And if you remember from a few sections back, right, we can tell our function goes from decreasing to increasing. So I think you'll give me on this piece of the function, right? I only want this piece, and we've talked about piecewise functions also, but I would like this piece of the parabola. And the x values on which that is happening, the x values on which this parabola is non-decreasing are from x equaling zero all the way to the right. So the domain I'm really interested in is zero to infinity. Okay, and I'm going to redraw this because I've just shaded in a bunch of stuff. Let me get rid of that little outline. Okay, and I'm actually gonna erase the left half of this graph because I don't want that piece anymore. The only piece I want is on the right. All right, if I only consider half of the parabola, this does now become one-to-one, -one, right? I've passed the horizontal line test. Now, what's the range of this function? Well, again, this, this is going from a y value of negative five and we go up forever. So I'm at negative five to infinity. Oops, not to eight. <laughs> Sideways eight to infinity. All right, so I've, at this point, just answered the first question. I have found a domain where this function is one-to-one -one and non-decreasing, right? I took a piece of that function. Now, if you remember, if you want to write this up, if you actually want to see that piece, let me just show you what, what we have here. I'm going to go to my y equals, and let's do x squared minus 5. All right, and we see the entire parabola come in. Again, it's going to fail the horizontal line test, and I really just want that piece. So we talked about this way back when we were doing piecewise functions, but if you put parentheses around your binomial and multiply it using some, some of your, your logic, and I'll show you what I mean, we only want the right half. Yeah, we want x to be greater than zero. That's what zero to infinity means. You type in that restricted domain by using second in math, going into your test. Oh, and not your logic, excuse me, your test menu. We want greater than or equal to zero, and I close that out. 
When you do that, this is telling your calculator, hey, graph this function, but only on this domain, right? Just this piece. So when I graph that, you're gonna see my calculator pop back out just the right piece. And that is a one-to-one -one function, a one-to-one -one parabola, or a one-to-one -one parabola, yes, on a restricted domain. Now what this also means is because we're about to go find the inverse, I know things are gonna flip-flop, right? I, you know going in that the domain of your inverse function is gonna be negative five to infinity and the range of your inverse function is gonna be zero to infinity. I don't even have to do the work on that. There's not, I don't need to even find the inverse function and graph it to know that this is going to play out like that. All right, so with that, let's go find this inverse function, right? So I've written the domain in interval notation, but I have not found the inverse of f restricted to that domain. So let's, let's go find that inverse of f. So to do that, I'm gonna scooch this up just so I have some space to do it. All right, so let's see. My original function, let me separate just a bit. My original function was x squared minus five. I'm gonna swap x and y out. I'm going to solve for y. So I will get y squared equaling x plus five. When I square root both sides, you have to remember that the plus or minus shows up. And we will need to make a decision, all right? Are we going to take the positive square root of five or the negative square root of five? We only want one of them. If I took both of them, it would actually give me the full sideways parabola. So let's think about this, all right? We're restricting our domain to negative five to infinity, and that's to account for the fact that x plus five has to be greater than or equal to zero. All right, so I have this domain restriction because x plus five, that radicand, would have to be greater than or equal to zero, so x would have to be greater than or equal, oops, excuse me, to negative five. Okay, so that's where this domain restriction is coming from. But I want us to think about this range restriction. The range of this function should be zero to infinity. Now this is a toolkit function, or at least it's a shift of a toolkit function. Let's think about it. You know the positive square root of x plus five. Well, here's the positive square root of x. If I have plus five, it's gonna move left five units and look something like that. So I'm either using the positive square root of x plus five or the negative square root. Well, if it was the negative square root, it would be here. So this is the positive square root of x plus five. This is the negative square root of x plus five. Because if we remember from our section on transformations, if there's a negative out in front of the grouping symbol, in this case, out in front of the radical, it would reflect over the x-axis. Okay, so which of these two functions has a range of zero to positive infinity? Is it the negative square root of x plus five or the positive square root of x plus five? And I think you'll give me that it's the positive square root of x plus five. So with that, my actual inverse function, it's not both of these, I have to commit. So in this case, I know that f inverse of x is the positive square root of x plus five. All right, and that's very important that I choose the correct one and that I choose in general. All right, so if we restrict our domain to zero to infinity, because we're taking the right half of this parabola, then that implies our range is negative five to infinity. So on the inverse, I know the domain will be from negative five to infinity and the range will be from zero to infinity. So I have to take the positive square root. All right, now let me go graph this. All right, so let me scooch this back down. Okay. So if I wanna do the positive square root of x plus five, instead of starting at zero, zero, I'll move left one, two, three, four, five. All right, and then I would have had the square root of one being one, but I need to move left five. So one, two, three, four, five. And typically the square root of four is equal to two, but I also need to move that left five. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, and I can start to see these mirror, right? This was the point zero, negative five. This is the point negative five, zero. Note that the X and Y coordinates flip-flopped. This was the point one, negative four, and this is the ordered pair here, negative four, one. I'm gonna sneeze, <sighs> excuse me. This was the ordered pair two, negative one. This is negative one, two. So I can see some points. I think this last one I graphed here was what 
um, 3, 4. So I need to go out to 4 and up 3. All right, so now I can see that function going in like that. Now let's, let's just check here. All right, if I had the square root of x plus 5 and I graphed it, that does look like a pretty good reflection. We talked about this briefly in a different example, but if you're on your calculator and you really want to test out are these functions inverses of one another, put into y3, put that, that dividing line of y equaling x. I like to make it thick just so I can see it. If that turns out to be a line of symmetry between these two functions, you know you've done your job, right? And you can see it exactly cuts that, that graph in half, right? One becomes a mirror image of the other. This reflected over this line is this piece. This piece reflected over this line is this piece. So that's looking pretty good. I am happy with that, all right? So with that, there's a pretty intense example in example eight, right? We were restricting domains, which had implications on ranges. We were flip-flopping domains and ranges, and these restrictions helped us decide which square root we were gonna take, either the positive or negative square root. We had our graphs. We noticed that the X and Y coordinates were changing places from the original function to the inverse, and again, this was F. This is f inverse. You can see that if I were to take my ruler and put the line y equals x right through there, it would, in, in fact, be a symmetric division, right? We can see that if I drew that, it would cut these, this graph in half. All right, so we've got all of that. We're gonna practice this graphical approach uh, with inverses on the next couple of examples. I'll see you in a bit, bye.